there is this common perception, maybe misperception out there, that people who are on the public dole or people who are getting public benefits, uh, that's what that's all they do for their entire life. True or false? False. False. There, you might have the impression that there is just intergenerational dependency and your receipt of a welfare program is handed down by your parents and you'll hand it to your children, but no. Or you get on welfare and that's all you do for the rest of your life. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so that's not what happens. It's not it's not the luxurious hammock that Paul Ryan and Scott Walker and all these other guys describe it. Uh, the Census Bureau put out some data based on surveys in which they they tracked people over periods of years. And it turns out that most people, fifty six percent who receive some sort of means tested government program, which is anything for which you have to be poor to qualify like food stamps or Medicaid, 56% of people who, who enroll in a benefit are off within three years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And of that, and th- the big chunk of that, 31% off in one year. Now, that still leaves 43% of the total who receive benefits from three to four years. So, I, you know, I, you can't really get it for shorter than a year in some cases, like you sign up for food stamps, you don't have to certify again for a full year unless you uh, get a job and start making money. you got to let them know about that. So there, you, when you start on these programs, it's going to be a chunk of time, typically, unless you have a major change. So uh, I was still struck by I, 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 I wonder if people – I didn't know if people would think that these were short or long periods of time that, that – uh, the people got but, benefits for. But, for example, food stamps, that's one of the ones which is really cyclical, isn't it? I mean, people get on it and and and, and for a while, then they're off, and if things go bad again, they can get back on it. Yeah, absolutely, and it's food stamps and Medicaid are the two big programs that are really driving these numbers because it's like 15 and 13% of all Americans who were enrolled in either of these programs at a given time in 2012, for example, and these the uh, food stamps totally follows what the economy is doing with a lag. Yeah. So as the economy had gotten terrible, food stamp enrollment shot up, and as the economy has gotten better, only now are are uh, fewer people beginning to receive benefits. It's it's gone down. It's come down from 47 million to now 45 million. Still a large number of Americans. But yeah, you sign up for six or 12 months. And then if you start yeah. making money at a job, right. you don't qualify anymore. 47 million Americans today. Uh, 45 today. Today. And food it, stamps. Yeah. It had been up to 47 two years ago. And we have just <laughs> recently started seeing the year over year, you know, month to month declines. There's still a huge chunk of Americans. Uh, the big economic issue today that being debated in the Congress, I have to ask about before let's go, is uh, the TPP or the Trans-Pacific Partnership Passed the Senate, now in front of the House, where um, President Obama looking for a yes vote. Is he going to get it? It, We talked about this last week. It's it's still not clear. Yeah. I think it's still full of suspense, this House vote. And the House is a place where things go wrong all the time under uh, Speaker John Boehner's leadership. Things will come to the floor expecting to pass or, or, you know, they'll be nearing a vote and then they'll yank it. So it's it's a, a totally uncertain thing, and uh, we don't know you know to what degree will Democrats get behind it, and also will they you know they don't have enough Republicans either, so it it, it will be an nail biter. You need 217 votes to get it passed in the House. I saw an article the other day. There are 17 Democrats who have said they will vote for it. Uh, I don't know how many Democrats have said they will not. There are just a handful of Democrats who are like in between. So with 17, they need 217. With 17 Democrats already committed, uh, Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi has told John Boehner he has to come up with 200 Republicans. In other words, <laughs> she's not going to deliver one more Democrat. Right, and that's out of 245 and she Republicans. Yeah, so. right. And she hasn't said yes or no herself on TPP. She's one of those Democrats who's still uncommitted or undecided or just won't announce how she's going to vote. 
but uh, she's doing nothing, obviously, to round up votes for, she, for I, the president. She doesn't mind letting John Boehner kind of twist in the wind a little bit. <laughs> she has described his speakership in the past as amateur hour. Yeah. And I think she, you know, if, when you're in politics, you pride yourself on vote counting ability. So that's a major diss. That was a major diss. She's not just letting John Boehner twist in the wind. She's letting President Obama yeah. twist in the wind a little bit here, too. Arthur, great to see you. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Have a good week. See you next week. See you. <laughs>